All right, I hope you've been enjoying hacking so far. Let's carry on and look some more tools in Kali. So far, we've looked at the information gathering section. We looked at NetDiscover, Nmap, Zenmap. We looked at the vulnerability analysis using Nessus, Nmap. We've also seen OpenVAS, which again, you do not see here in the favorites menu. We looked at web application analysis tools. Using Nikto, I told you about tools such as WP Scan and Drupal Scan. We looked at the database assessment. We guessed the username and a password for a MySQL database. We logged into it and we did that using some password attack tools. Now I'm going to skip over the wireless attack section because that is a completely different course on its own. And the same goes for the reverse engineering. Again, this is a completely separate course on its own. I really wouldn't be giving it any justice if I show you one tool or two tools from the wireless or the reverse engineering menu. So we'll move on to the exploitation tools and we've seen Metasploit more than once. So let's continue now with the sniffing and spoofing tools. I want to revisit one of the tools that we saw in the Hacking for Beginners course. And this is the Wireshark. Wireshark is a packet sniffing tool or a packet capture tool. It's a tool that sits on your computer monitors the network traffic and captures all the packets. You can also specify what kind of packets you want to capture. So in this section, we're going to be digging a little bit deeper into Wireshark more than what we did in the Hacking for Beginners course. And I'm going to be showing you how to look for usernames and passwords that are traversing your network. To start with, I'm going to the capture menu, then options, and in options, you need to choose what network interface you want to capture traffic on. So let me explain this a little bit more. Most of the modern computers or laptops have more than one network interface. Mainly they have the wired and the wireless interface. So if you're, for example, in a university lab on a desktop, you're very likely to be using the wired interface. There's a cable plugged into your computer that gives you access to the network. If you're using your laptop at home, for example, you're likely using the wireless interface. Now, pay attention to this. I'm using Kali on a virtual machine. The virtual machine thinks that it's using a wired connection, not a wireless connection. And this is what the ETH0 is. Remember what we talked about in the networking section in the previous videos? If it were a wireless connection, it would be WLAN. But because it's not wireless, it is wired. In other words, it's Ethernet. It is ETH0. Make sure that you understand the difference because if you are on a VM, if you are in a virtual machine and you try to find the wireless interface, you won't be able to do that. However, if you have installed Kali directly on your computer and you're using wireless, you should be looking for the WLAN, not the ETH. I hope this is clear. I'm gonna hit the start button to start monitoring or sniffing the network. And now I have started the capture. So what I'm doing right now off screen, which you cannot see, is I went back to the Tomcat server that we hacked before, and I'm logging in using the admin credentials. So I'm creating this scenario where an admin, which is right now me, is logging into the manager console. And the hacker, which is the screen that you're seeing right now, is monitoring the network, hoping that he or she will capture the username and password. So the admin is logging in and you'll see packets starting to scroll on the screen. Because I am on a closed network, there isn't a lot of packets that you're seeing here. However, if you are on a different network and you're using different tools and browsers and so on, you're going to be seeing tons of packets scroll by. So it'll make it very difficult for you to find the information that you're looking for. And this is why we use display filters. A display filter basically tells Wireshark exactly what I want to see. So ignore all the other packets and just show me what I'm looking for. And to do that, I click on the expression button and you see all of this here? All of these are network protocols. We talked about things like HTTP and FTP and SSH and so on, but there are tons more. What I am interested in right now is the HTTP protocol because I know that the Tomcat manager is being accessed through a web browser and there's a web server behind it. So it is very likely to be on HTTP or HTTPS. 
HTTPS is the secure HTTP. It's an encrypted HTTP. So if I was unlucky enough that the admin was using HTTPS, I will not be able to capture the username and password. It will be encrypted. So I will see packets, but it will look like gibberish. This is why it's very important when you're logging into your email, to your social media, to Hackers Academy, for example, you make sure that the URL starts with HTTPS. And we're going to be seeing why right now. So I'm going to scroll down and look for the HTTP protocol. Here it is. And look here at the filter. You'll see that it's highlighted in green, which means Wireshark understands what I want. Now I'm going to add another filter, which is the word contains. Notice now how the bar turned into red, which means Wireshark doesn't know exactly what I want. I need to be adding something. If I keep my mouse cursor on top of the word that I want to use, you get a nice detailed explanation of what it means to use the word contains. So if I want to use the word contains or the filter contains, I need to provide a value with it. What do I want it to contain? In other words, what I'm telling Wireshark right now is, ignore every packet except HTTP packets. And ignore every HTTP packet as well, except the one that contains the word manager in the packet. So for example, if I'm trying to access Hackers Academy over HTTPS, this is going to be ignored because I'm filtering out HTTPS. I just want HTTP. But let's say I'm accessing Hackers Academy over HTTP, Without the contains filter, that will be displayed. However, because I'm telling Wireshark now that I want it to contain the word manager, it's going to go and look at all the HTTP packets and find the word manager. In this case, I'm looking for the word manager. Why? Because I know that the Tomcat manager, if somebody is accessing it or logging into it, there must be the word manager in the packet. And I click OK. Now notice how the display filter has populated here. And obviously you can change this from here. So let's say, for example, I want to look for the word password or for the word log on or for the word login or for the word admin. You will see that it automatically populates and only displays the packets that have this particular word. And now if I click on these packets, I can actually see the content of these packets. Let's say, for example, I'm looking for Tomcat. You'll see the HTTP GET request here where the admin was accessing the slash manager page. And this is the content of the page. And of course, you can go through every single packet and have fun with it, look at the content and see what's been trying to access and so on. For the purpose of this exercise, though, what we're looking for is the login credentials, the username and the password that the admin used to log in into the manager because we need that in order to compromise the system. So I'm going to go to this packet here, where you can see that the admin has successfully accessed the slash manager slash HTML page, which tells me that whoever is accessing that page managed to successfully log in, otherwise they wouldn't have been directed or redirected to that page. And if I look at the content of this packet, I see something that says authorization, basic, and a string of text. And here it is again in a tidier format. So what am I looking at here? This is actually the username and the password that the admin used. However, they are in an encoded format. In other words, they are obfuscated. They're not encrypted. They are just obfuscated. And the encoding used here is called base64. You can tell what type of encoding this is because of the equal signs, the two equal signs that you see towards the end. This is a telltale sign that the encoding being used is the base64 encoding, which is one of the simplest encodings out there. And it's very easy to deobfuscate or to reverse. And to do that, I'm going to copy the string by right clicking on it and saying copy value. And all you have to do is Google a base64 decoder. You'll see a number of websites that you can use Pick anyone you want and paste the text. Make sure that you paste only the encoded text. Hit decode, give it a second, and you'll see the username and password here, Tomcat, Tomcat. 
This is the username and password that we managed to guess in previous videos and that gave us access to the manager backend, which also in turn allowed us to compromise the system. So in this scenario, what we've done is that we assumed the admin has changed the default username and password. We tried to guess it, but we couldn't. We tried to use a password dictionary attack, but that failed. So what was our resolution to this? What did we do? We ran a packet capture or a network sniffer, which is called Wireshark. Again, there are so many different tools that do the exact same job. For this exercise, we chose Wireshark because it is the most popular one. We set it up to capture traffic across the network. And then we filtered out the display to find the obfuscated username and password. We reversed this obfuscation. We got the username and password. So it doesn't matter what complexity the password is. It could be a hundred characters long. We would have captured it all the same. And you know what's going to happen next. You take this username and password. You log into the manager. You make sure that you have access. And then you go back to your Metasploit. You configure the exploit and you get access to the system. But remember what happened when we got access to the system exploiting the Tomcat manager? We ended up getting access as a low privileged user. We did not get access as root. And do you remember what I told you needs to happen after that? You needed to escalate privileges. You needed to find a way to escalate your privileges. This is what we're going to be talking about in the next section. For now, go ahead and try what we've done here. And once you're ready, let's move on to the next section.